Good evening, everybody. This is Michael Filigara with LogicalSystems.com, bringing you the Elliott Wave update for the NQ on Thursday, March 18th, 2021. Um, we left off last night looking for additional upside to complete a intermediate degree B wave. This intermediate degree B wave sits within an ongoing um, primary wave A down. Primary wave A is going to consist of three waves of intermediate degree, which are going to label A, B, and C. And B wave just completed, leaving us the C wave. C wave will be its own five wave decline, and we're in that first wave right now. And <clears throat> What happened before is we again were looking for that upside. So we needed it to go above 13,287.25. That would then complete nice and neatly the package of this B wave uh, rally. The market did not reach that level. The market only reached 13,271 yesterday. And so into the close. So that then produced what we would consider a failure. So the fifth wave did not take out the high of the third wave. And that basically set up the failure. So it failed by approximately 16, 17 points. And so we're going to call. We're going to put a pin in it. We're going to say that the, the B wave is now complete and the C wave has begun. Within that C wave, we're looking to count uh, the initial five wave structure down. So this is going to be wave one, wave two. Wave three subdivides very neatly and completes down here. We're going to have to break it down even more to see where these different, because uh, it's just congestion, but it actually is an ABC. And then the next wave uh, begins. So if we're going to put a label here, a four there, and wave five now starts to unroll. <coughs> and wave five, keeps getting a little bit away from me. Wave five <clears throat> is to be one, two, and then this is wave three. We got a wave four. And now, come on. Ah, this seems a pain. And now we are dropping back in wave five. Now, here's the, here's the key. All wave five down needed to do was to get below today's intraday low at 12,761. It's now done it by 10 bucks. Is that enough? Um, it could be, or it's going to, we may see this thing just kind of top out here and we're gonna see another drop down. And then we have a stronger zone, which tops at 12,724 and runs down to 12,702. And that's just basically another you know, 70, 70 bucks from here. And that is totally within the realm of reality. And unless, of course, we begin to break, and I'm gonna say these levels, we start to break above here, or even here, I would start to put this as the finishing move. And if that's the case, folks, then we're just going to have a wave two. This is the way the whole building blocks begin, right? Everything right now, because the trend remains down, so five-way structures are going to be more apparent in an impulsive fashion going down versus going up. We will have five waves up, but they're within uh, a correction of an ongoing decline. And so we're getting that initial five down. <clears throat> if that's all we're going to get, we can do quick Fibonacci's on this. And put and wrap around what we believe wave two is capable of doing. So it's going to be pretty easy because we can just run some Fibonacci's from this high, because that's where it all began. It's going to be 71. Can I get 71, please? Come on. There. Uh, I'll take that. Oh, it didn't go over to me. Draw the tools. That's why I wouldn't take it. It didn't know to. Now it should anchor. Come on. Anchor for me. All right. 
I'm going to leave it there just for the sake of getting this done. These are going to be approximate because I'm not zoning N on and it's 51. All right, right there. Um, <clears throat> here's, here's what we would then be looking for in a wave two. We'd be looking for at least a move up to 12,874 in the three waves, in three waves. If indeed that's the low, then we can start to project here. And on a 15 minute basis, that's not all that much because that's just above the, uh, the 50 day moving average. If I take this out to an hourly chart, still gonna be the same Fibonacci's, but we're gonna see that we, we actually can easily on an hourly chart get up to its 50 day moving average, which is closer to a 50% retracement of that decline that we've had thus far. That makes sense. That actually looks pretty feasible. So we're talking about a rally up to here. And so basically taking back uh, a wave two would retrace up into the fourth uh, area of the fourth wave of one lesser degree. And that would be this one. And also to where the uh, taking back uh, retracing wave five, hundred percent and totally within the realm of possibilities and, and actually would fit pretty cleanly. Now, I wanna just bring out one additional thing, and this could be very important. If we look at this larger structure, I'm gonna remove these Fibonacci's. We look at this, it really can be taken as an A, a B, and a C. Now, I'm gonna go back out to that hourly chart if this is an A, a B, and a C, we would then possibly have to really reconfigure this entire B wave because if this structure is actually only going to be wave A, and what we're getting, excuse me, this would be the top of wave A, and then we get an A, B, C for a, the minor B, then we still have this an additional five wave sequence up to do C of B. That's why I said I'm pinning this here for right now, because we cannot exclude that potential right now. So now this is the anatomy that I'm talking about. You got to get in there and you got to look at both possibilities and then allow the market to tell you which one it's choosing instead of pinning on yourself or anybody else. Oh, you were wrong because you said it was going to go do this. No, I'm now going to present you both sides of the story. You want a bullish picture? I can give it to you. Where the market would then most likely, I would say very strongly, trade above 13,287 to finish the B way. And we can run Fibonacci's on that as well. But unfortunately, the the power of the, the drive down outweighed the power of yesterday's drive up. It just enveloped it and took it away. And so I need to give credence to that and credence also to the overall markets declining. That's even after the S&P made all new all-time highs against the Dow making new all-time highs and trading well above 33,000. So, you know, is the potential for it to go back up? Of course it's there. And you're going to pick a thousand and one reasons, but let's let the market tell us and then let's go in and let's trade it. So again, we're believing the open the possibility this is going to drop even further. So now we're going to set up what we think for tomorrow. If indeed the market begins to pull up, then we've got strong possibilities for the wave two to begin, that wave one would be complete. And it started here and it would end, let's say wherever. Right now we'd have to use 12,751 or 752. We must leave open the potential that the market's gonna drop to 12,724 all the way down to 12,702. 12,702 is an extension of wave A and wave, or this particular decline to this rally and then the subsequent decline. 
that would fit if we were looking for uh, we're looking for additional downside, but we have to still leave open the potential for a market to move up. But let me show you that quickly. Come on. So that we can look real quick to see where that 2701 number is coming from. And if you go, actually it's now a little bit lower. See the 1.618. So the 1.618, so this particular wave would be 1.618 of this particular wave at 12,699 or 12,700. And it actually, in some calculations, it's 12,702, up to 12,709. And that would then bring in wave one relationships to uh, wave five. So this area seems very highly likely. And so I, I kind of like would be looking for at least 12,724. It's not all that much, but we know if the market starts to break up here to 12,834, that it is likely complete at this low, or actually wherever that low should come in. And if we find it up there tomorrow uh, at the US Open, we're gonna be able to know that, that can, wherever this bottoms, it com likely completed this initial five, and we're now in a wave two rally. And if that's the case, we will be running different Fibonacci's. We would then be looking for retracements and not extensions. So right now, I would be looking again there to right now we're going to use 51. And you can see that as a minimum, if this is the bottom and this market starts to rally, as a minimum, it should get up to 12,873. So pretty much 100 points from here. And realistically, that could just be wave A. We do a little B wave and then we rally again. And this is more likely. 12,009. 12, what is that number? 12,943 or 48. So it's 12,950. And, and even higher is actually within the realm. Wave twos can easily do 50 to 62%. And that brings us back about 13,000. So that is the potential for a wave two rally. And, but I keep in mind the intensity of today's selling. So the sellers were very persistent when they showed up. And when, when markets broke out of particular uh, areas of congestion, it was very definitive. So it wasn't hard to determine the sellers have returned and they're picking up the pace. Um, very much like when the buyers jumped in there. It's like you just knew they're going to take it and it's going to go and it's going to go further than you think. And here it did and it broke a lot of, of the moving averages, which are now at least on this 15 minute chart. Come on. And on the five minute chart and on the two minute chart, yes, they're all in line for continued decline right now. And what I mean by that, look at the two minute. 200, the 100 is below the 200, the 50 is below the 100, the 20 is below the 50, the eight is below the 20, the four is below the eight. The five minute, the 200, the 100, the 50, the 20, the eight, and the four. The 15 minute, the 200, the 100, the 50, the 20, the eight, and the four. So it's, it is quite lined up to continue to go down. But we're gonna to look to our shorter term charts, two minute, five minute, to begin to show us when the market may have put in the bottom. You'll see that that fork started to hook. So it's hooking right there. It wants to turn higher. The eight's kind of not yet. So, but the four will turn, I mean, the four will turn right, right around if they begin to take this lower. So we're leaving open the possibility, 12, a return trip to uh, 12,751 or down to 12,724. 
which that zone runs down to 12,700. And if that holds, then we're still going to get our wave two rally. And you just adjust these same Fibonacci's. You're going to run it from there to wherever this low occurs. That's going to be your trading zones for tomorrow. Um, and if it continues to break below the 1.618 and keeps on going, well, then it will work out additional Fibonacci numbers. It just means that these sellers are very intense and these waves are, these, these corrective waves are shallow. And it's the, it's the impulse, which is at this point down, that is really going to be much, much stronger. That doesn't appear the case right now, but we work through a lot of congestion here for that continued downside to jump in and take the market down uh, 200 points, 200 additional points. Um, we are gonna use our one, min, our one and two minute charts actually to begin to show where direction can be. Right now, if we start to break above these um, very short term uh, moving averages, then you're gonna at least be looking for the rally to carry up to 12,778 or 781, excuse me. And if it breaks there and it has a little bit of oomph, then these are the next levels and so on. So if it's gonna to continue to rally, uh, you're, you're gonna, when it breaks above the 200, you need to flip over here and just see where it's broken above on these to realize that maybe it's going for this 200. These will reset, but it goes to this 200. Now we're flipping over to 15 so we can pick where the next upside levels are. We've got Fibonacci resistance already labeled out and it's on all the charts, but you can see where the two, three sixes way above. So it's going to take time, maybe, for it to get there. Depends on the intensity of how the buyers would move back in. I'm gonna leave it there. It's basically, we're looking at the anatomy. I'm gonna to continue to try to provide this more detail, uh, at least on the NASDAQ. And so the next update will be actually on Sunday, since tomorrow is Friday. So the next update will be Sunday evening.